Hi, so I definitely have a problem. I don't believe anything should be so complicated, particularly when you look at inverters. I mean, these are crazy prices. There are a couple of thousand pounds of these things. Now, changing DC into AC is not a new problem. It's been around since the 1900s. When you look back on what they used to do, they were really inventive about how they did that. And one of the really popular methods was to tie a motor together with a generator to create something called a dynamotor. And what that did was inversion. Now, it did it mechanically, but they were around until the 60s, and the big issue with them was they wore out. However, these things, I, I think they must breed. I have loads of these things. They just collect them. These things aren't DC motors. They're actually brushless DC motors. They've got no brushes in them. This was the big issue with dynam dynamotors. And here we have a solution without brushes. So I was driving home last night and it occurred to me that if we took two of these, glued one to the other, left one as a DC motor and the other we made into a generator, we have in fact got an incredibly robust inverter. Now, these things last forever, actually. You pull these things out of uh, equipment because they just run and run and run. And Luke's got one from 1990. It's 30 years old and it's still running because they've got no brushes. They just don't wear out. So what we're going to do is exactly that. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to convert these to a generator, but we're going to go through it anyway. So let's have a look close up on the inside of this. First thing, remove that label. You get that label off, what you'll see is that. In there is a little plastic washer, which you need to prise off. It's got a split in it. Prise the washer off, and that's the spring clip that holds the whole thing together. And then the fan will come off. There we go, like that. And just check there's nothing else in there. Sometimes there's a rubber O-ring, sometimes there's a little washer. In this case, we've got a bearing and absolutely nothing. There's our magnet right there, and there's the bit we're interested in right there, the coils. And we need to remove that. Now, the coils are held on a central pillar with a press fit, but it is tough. So you need to get a pair of grips and gently coax it free, and it will come free. And there we go. There we go. Now flip it over. This is all the control electronics, none of which we need, and we don't need this either. What we are interested in is that big lump there, there, and there. They're the ends of the coils. They're usually a, well, usually a Y, sometimes a delta configuration coil set wound around these, and those are actually the output points for a three-phase supply. So we need to scrape all of that off and solder three wires onto there. So that's it, we've scraped off the electronics, soldered on the wires, and we're ready to put the thing back together. When we put this back together, we don't want the teeth of the fan, so we're going to saw those off so that we just get the hub section, and that's all we really want. Now this is a three-wire version, you can get four-wire versions. If you have a quick look on the net, it'll tell you about soldering up the four-wire, but it's no more difficult than that. So there it is all put back together and you can see I've broken the fan blades off because we don't need them and that is a three-phase generator. So I've hooked it up here to the meter. I've just gone across two phases and that'll give us a fault reading. If I spin that by hand, look at that, it's four volts out of it immediately. That's just crazy. So now we've created our three-phase generator all we actually need to do is stick our DC motor onto it. So I've glued a plastic disc on and stuck four bolts in. Now, one thing that's not immediately obvious is that these things have to line up. If they're not lined up, of course, they're going to shake. However, these things are actually made to incredible tolerances. So when I drop that on there and put a bit of glue, they're going to line up. So if you get your two fans the same size, you're not going to have any problems. Okay, there it is together. Let's give it a bit of voltage. And she's off. <laughs> okay, so we're putting 12 volts DC into that and off one phase getting 15 volts AC out of it. You can hear it. It's really quiet. That is going to last as long as those bearings. So for years, okay, that's going to run for absolutely ages. It'll be surprisingly efficient because we've removed all the blades. So it's doing no work apart from that transformation of DC into AC. Obviously, if we give it an AC load, we'll pull more on the DC because of the conversion. So it's going to be really efficient. It's going to last for ages. <laughs> that 
cost me nothing. So even if you wanted something more powerful, and incidentally it will work to the rating of the motor, whatever the motor rating was is what that's going to work to, if you have to buy a more powerful, more expensive motor in order to get more power out of it, you're probably looking at a couple of hundred pounds. But then remember, solid state inverters are thousands of pounds. So we can make a mechanical inverter that is really quite efficient, can handle the power and does an awesome job of converting DC into AC very cheaply indeed. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you found it interesting and thank you very much for watching.